it's so here. So why do we introduce complex uh, numbers? It's because it allows us to solve. It's the, it's basically here's the fundamental theorem of algebra. So given any polynomial with real coefficients, complex complex or real, mainly we're going to be dealing with real coefficients. Um, I hate how this thing is described in the book. Let me just re-say this. This is how it's in the book, so that's why I teach it um, on the notes, but let me just say how it really, given any polynomial, and as long as these are real or complex, but mainly if they're real, I need I need the complex numbers in order to factor it completely. So any num any reals you give me, can I factor in the reals? Probably, but um, if I add the complex numbers to it, I can definitely factor it down. And that's important because we call that the algebraic closure of a set. So that means we can actually solve all the polynomials and fall and find all the zeros. There, you can get really fancy with this, like the integers. You don't need all the you don't have to go to all complex numbers, but only a special set of integers in order to close it. There's other fields, but basically the reason we introduce complex numbers at all is that way we can find all the zeros for a polynomial. That's the main reason. Does it have really useful applications? Oh yeah, you betcha. For those are gonna be electrical engineers, um, you're gonna have complex permittivities, and that tells you how, how the decay constant, like, it, just the way the math works out is how much the function, how much the electromagnetic wave dies or gets absorbed into the material. And so it's important to know those things. It's important to have those things. And so I didn't, it, it appears everywhere once we did this, but the main reason it came about is because we wanted to solve things that look like this. So the whole thing we're doing in this one is we're going to be trying to factor factor polynomials completely. And so given any size polynomial, I'm gonna help you get to the point where you can always solve it. Um, and so let's start crunching through that. All right, so here, here I wanna just remind you of what we call a factor by grouping. And so notice here that this this kind of mimics what's going on here. And so if that mimics what's going on there, you can pull out this x squared. So I get x squared is x minus three plus, and then here I'm gonna pull out um, nothing, and this is just x minus three. And then now that I have this, I can write x minus three. Um, so I can pull out the common factor here of x minus three, and then what's left here is x squared. There's technically a one here. So we'll put the one there and we get this. Have you guys seen factoring by grouping before? Yeah, most of you have seen it vaguely. <laughs> um, it's something, it's just one of those tricks you use in a rare occasion, but it's just something to have in your little tool bag. So once we get to here, um, well, before you were done, right? Because this doesn't factor real nicely, but now we can factor this. This we can factor, because I'll here I'll have x squared equals to minus one, which means x equals plus or minus the square root of negative one. That means x equals plus or minus i, right? And so we can actually, if I wanted to factor this completely, that means that x minus three, and then the two zeros that come out of this is x minus i, and then x plus i, the two zeros I got here. So it'd be x minus the positive one, technically the first time, and then the negative one the second time. And so here we factored it completely, and the zeros are three and plus or minus i. And so here we're just, all we're gonna do is just uh, do these add, add infinite item. Okay, so if it's over a size of three, for the purposes of this class, I'm gonna tell you at least one of them or there'll be a cute trick. So if I don't tell you, think of a cute trick. If I do tell you, go ahead and do this. So here, this is a polynomial with size three. I tell you this is a zero, right? If it says hint, try this, it works. I'm not out trolling people, right? Um, 
So here, I'm going to put that as my zero, and we're going to do synthetic division. So I'll have one. There's no x squared to it, so zero, minus two, and four. So this comes down. So the first one we do synthetic division, this comes down to one. We multiply this one by negative two, we get negative two. Add these up. So we're adding these up. So this technically was a zero we added up. We add these two up, we get negative two. Multiply by negative two, I get positive four. So here I'm multiplying by negative two. So multiply by negative two, get positive four. Add these two up, I'm gonna get two. Two times negative two would be negative four, and then I get zero. And so here I'll have x plus two. Remember if the zero, remember it's x minus c is my zero. And so if my zero is negative two, I'd be positive two, because it would be minus minus a two. And then I'll have x squared minus two x plus two. You can try to factor this, you can't. And so what do we have to do at this point? Well, here we're going to have to solve it using the quadratic formula. So here we're going to pull this up, put it in the quadratic formula. So I'll have x equals minus a minus 2. So this would be minus a minus 2. So it would be positive 2 plus or minus 2 squared, which would be negative 2 squared minus 4. a is 1. c is 2 all over 2a, which is just 1, so it'll be 2. Here I have 4 minus 2 4, so this just equals plus 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. Negative 4 over 2, so that gives me 2 plus or minus 2i over 2, which is equal to 1 plus or minus i. And so, I guess I don't really have room. Um, yeah, I guess I do. So here I have x my x plus two. Here I found out what my two zeros were. So the x, so the x minus one plus i, so it'll be one minus i. And then it'll be x minus one minus i, which would be one plus i. And so, and then I'll have to say my zeros here, put my zeros over here. I don't need my, as much room as I hope. Negative two is, so this one, this one gives me negative two. This one gives me one plus i, and this one gives me one minus i, so plus or minus i. So here are my zeros. So, um, Okay, and so the complex, so the complex conjugate zero theorem is what I already, I wrote it on the last one, I got ahead of myself. The polynomial has real coefficients and complex zeros from a pair of conjugates. State the pair of conjugates above. So from the first one, my conjugate is plus i and then minus i, that's my conjugate. For my second one, here I have one plus i and then it's conjugate one minus i. And so notice that I have both set of conjugates here. Okay. All right. And so this looks like a big disastrous mess, and it kind of is, but you just kind of crunch through it to find all the zeros. All right. Um, so the zero theorem every polynomial of degree greater than n, or n of one or higher, has exactly n zeros if you count multiplicity. Um, so multiplicity is just the number of times that a zero occurs. We've talked about this before. Let's just kind of go over it again. All right, so let's pretend I give you this. Can you factor this? And the answer is technically, yes, you should be able to, but let's, let me teach you the trick. Here I have x squared and x squared. And so technically you can, if you pretend that this is x squared squared plus two x, squared minus eight, and then you pretend x squared was x, you can write it this way. And then you can factor, so negative eight, so negative what, two, so negative eight, and I want to get the four, so I'll have a, a positive two, so I'll have a, a positive two, and I'll have a positive four and a negative two. Yeah, that gives me what I want, so plus four, 
minus two. Does everyone see how I factor to this? Is you just pretend that this is x and this is x and then you just write it here. It gets you to a little bit. It's a cute trick. I don't think I'll ever test you on it, but it is a cute trick. <laughs> it's something I want you to see once before. All right, so here, um, so here, if we have this, this will be x squared equals negative four square root. If I take the square root of both sides, right? And so this one will give me x plus 2i because of the square root and x minus 2i. Here, this one's, if I move this over, it's just 2. And so I'll just get x equals plus or minus the square root of 2. So this is x um, plus square root 2. And this is x minus square root 2. Um, and so here, here we have a multiplicity of one because here my zeros here are minus two i as I have it written plus two i uh, minus square root two plus square root two. So those are my zeros, and they all have multiplicity of one. So it's very common that you only have multiplicity of one. Let's do this one. So here I can factor out an x safely. So I can write out an x and this just becomes three x plus 24 or x to the fourth plus 24 x squared plus, you know, I can do one better. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's back the train out, back up the train. Notice everywhere here I have an x and a three, right? So let's pull both of those out, <laughs> x. And so 3x, so if I pull out 3x, this just becomes x to the fourth. If I pull out 3x here, so x cubed goes down to x squared, and then 24 goes to 8. So I divide 24. So 8x squared. And then if I pull out 3x here, this becomes 16. And that's it. Does everyone see how I pulled out the 3x? Let me, let me make sure you got that. You see how I can safely pull out the 3x everywhere? Uh, yeah, yep, 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 everyone's good on that. All right. <laughs> then I'll show you the trick one more time. So here, here, notice that we have an, an x to the fourth, an x squared, and nothing. We can use the same trick we used last time. If you don't understand this trick, just chunk it through a, a calculator for now. Um, so here I can say x squared something and x squared something. Well, what is that something? Well, here, I want my factor of 16 to equal this, and so it'll be 4 and 4. So plus 4. Plus 4. So I can, so if I pretend once again that this is x x squared squared, and then this is just x squared, and you can just write x squared here. Technically, you could have done this if I had x to the six plus uh, x to the third. You can still do the same tricks. You can have x cubed plus something, x cubed plus, I don't know, four, right? Um, you, can, you can split this up as x cubed squared and then x cubed. And so you can do this for any power. It's just, it's just a cute trick. Um, so once we get here, you can notice that this does not factor, but we don't, we, do we know what the factors this is? Yeah, it's these, right? And we've already done it. So it'd be three X and then be X plus two I, X minus two I, and then we have them again, X plus two I, X minus two I. And so here we completely factored it because I know, I know what this factor is into. I've already done it. And so if I write out my x, or oops, I write out my zeros real quick. So here completely factored, looks like this. Another way of writing this, hold on, let me write it the other way. I can write it as three x, x plus two i squared, and then x minus two i squared. This is either, either of these are acceptable. And then if you do the zeros, well, three x, the zero here is just zero. Um, here, the zero here would be minus 2i. Here, the zero here would be plus 2i. 
because remember it's an, it's x minus c. And so here we'll have this. The multiplicity of this is one. How many times does this occur? Well, it occurred twice up here or twice here. Same thing, two. And then here, twice up here or to the power of two, two. And so here we get the multiplicities. Yeah, so multiplicity of two. Yep. Mm -hmm. So these are multiplicity two and two. All right. Um, so if a polynomial has real coefficients, you can either factor it into linear, uh, linear or irreducible quadratic factors with our in real coefficients. If you want to strictly, strictly, strictly stay for the reals, every now and then you do. Um, it's not that often. You can rewrite this as, um, so here I have, um, this is just, this is an, is what I call an FYI, FYI stuff. Um, when I teach you three things, I'm gonna teach you three things I want you to see. It's stuff you've seen before, roughly. So if you ever see it again, you're like, oh, I think I vaguely saw that. Stuff you can kind of work with, or stuff you can crunch through with help, right? You know, crunch with help, crunch with help. Um, with help, and that'd be stuff like this cute little trick here. And then there's stuff you can just do, right? So there's three levels of care, right? Stuff you've seen before, but you don't really know how to do, but you kind of get it, and so you can crunch through it. Um, or you can kind of get it, so if you see it again and they ask you to learn it, you'll be okay. Crunch through with help would be stuff of like, well, like, yeah, if you've seen this before, if you looked it up, you're like, oh yeah, I think I remember how to do that. And there's stuff you can just do off the top of your head. This is in this category, <laughs> something you just seen. and. Um, I'll kind of explain how, what level of care I have you to do stuff. And stuff I test you on is usually in this category or in this category. I never test you on any of this stuff. So what all this is saying is, if I wanted to stay reals and I still want to completely factor, what does this end up being? Well, this becomes imaginary. So that's an irreducible quadratic factor in the reals. So that's an irreducible quadratic factor. But this I can factor still. And so this is x plus square root. And so here I've written as the fact as the factor is as small as I can get it while still being real. That's all it really wants you to do. And then here I can do the same thing up here. So 3x plus x squared plus 4 squared is the so here's my linear term, here's my reducible quadratic term. That's all you need to know about that. Okay. Don't, it's just something you've seen. I won't. You don't get homework on it. You don't get test on it. All right. So let's do very last page. And let me just crunch through a couple more of these. So this is, these are, oh, I, I do this one more time. Man, I do this a lot. Um, didn't you already do this? Yeah. We legit did this. We legit did this in the last problem, didn't we? I need to rewrite that. <laughs> this just ends up being x squared plus 4, x squared plus 4. We generally do this, and, and so zeros. So, so the zeros here is x equals, you know, plus or minus 2i, both with multiplicity of 2. Yeah, we've done this. Let's get this one. So let's just do these two. All right, so this is probably what you're gonna see on the exam. So I'm probably gonna give you something a little bit longer. This is what you see on the homework as well. It's a little bit longer. And I give you a couple of the zeros and I want you to work through the process. So on the homework, please work through the process because what can I do with this? I can just throw it in Wolf and Ralph for and get answers. And that's, and that's not doing the homework, right? <laughs> so let's, let's do this. So if I give you the two things, what do I ask you to do? Well, the first thing I ask you to do is, you know, just crunch it through. And so let's start with, let me actually start with B, B is easier of the two. All right, so let's start with B. So here I say negative three. So negative three is a zero. So I put my negative three in the box. Here I'm gonna have one, six, 13, 24, and 36. In fact, we don't have to put in a zero this time because I didn't zero anything. There was no missing term. All right, so, and then this is plus, and so one plus zero is one, times negative three is negative three, negative three plus, or six plus negative three is three, 
and we multiply that by negative true, we get negative 9. 13 plus negative uh, 9 is 4. So here I'll get negative. I wrote 12, didn't I? This is 12, guys. <laughs> no, this is 24. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so if here is negative 12, 24 plus uh, negative 12 gives me minus 12. Minus 12 times that gives me minus 36, which gives me a zero, which is good. That means this is a factor. Remember, if the remainder is zero, it's a factor. Um, do I need to rewrite everything at this point? No, you can just do the negative three here, right? So negative three. In fact, if you wanted to skip all this, you can put the negative three here when I refactor again. I already have it all lined up. And so I just pretend this is all that exists. And so here, negative three. And the reason I asked you to do negative three because I said this is zero twice. So that's why we're repeating this. So here I get a one. This becomes minus three, so I get a zero, which gives me zero, which gives me four, which gives me a minus. This isn't negative 12, this is positive 12. This gives me a minus 12, and this gives me a zero. And so here I've done my factors. Here I have x minus, oh, x plus three, sorry, x plus three, x plus three. I factored it out twice, and then what am I left with? x squared plus 4. We've seen x squared plus 4 many times, so this becomes x plus 3, x plus 3, x minus 2i, and then x plus 2i. And so my zeros here are minus 3 plus or minus 2i, and the multiplicity here, the multiplicity. So here I had the negative three was a factor twice. And then here, these have multiplicity of one. Technically, at this point, at this point right here, I could have written x minus three, or x plus three times x cubed plus three x squared plus four x plus 12. That's the intermediate step. But if you're, if you're dividing twice, you don't have to do that. Yes, it would be just 12, thank you, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I messed up on that one, I did correct it. So technically, so you just factor it out. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that real quick, just so I have room to do my other problems. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. All right, so here I give you two different things to try. Um, so I give you two different zeros to try. I'm gonna do the easier zero first. So I'm going to put in two here. Why would I do that? Because I don't want to do negative third that much, right? Um, and so let's do the two. And so here I'll have a three minus two minus one, a minus 12 and a minus four. All right, we'll just go ahead and crunch through that. So two plus here, so two plus two, uh, three plus zero is three. We multiply that by two, gives me a six. Negative two plus six is four. Multiply that by two gives me eight. Negative one plus eight is seven. Multiply that by two, I get 14. Negative 12 plus 14 is two. Um, and then I multiply that by two, gives me positive four and zero. Okay, and so that cleanly factored. We don't have to rewrite it. We can just put negative three here my other zero in a nice box. I'm going to go ahead and crunch through this. So here I get three. Three times a negative three gives me minus one. Minus one times four plus four gives me three. Three times a negative third gives me minus one, which gives me six. And then here, this gives me uh, times a negative third, which gives me minus two, which gives me zero. And so here I have x minus two, x plus a third. And then here, what I'm left with is 3x squared plus 3x uh, plus 6. I can factor out a 3, so might as well do that. So here I'll have x minus 2, x plus a third, 3x squared plus x plus 2. 
Um, you can try to factor this for a while, it doesn't work. And so you just chunk it through the formula. So if we chunk it through the formula, minus b would be negative one plus or minus square root of one or negative one or one squared plus or minus um, four times one times two all over two. Crunch through this, I get minus one plus or minus negative seven. Oops. Square root of negative seven all over two. And so negative seven, so this becomes x equals minus a half plus or minus uh, square root seven pi over two. It doesn't really get cleaner than that. Um, and then here we have it completely factored. Here we have x minus two, x plus a third, so three. Um, and then we'll have x minus all this. And so x minus the minus will give me plus a half. And then minus square root 7 i over 2. And then the other one would be x minus the half. So, be, so plus a half. And then the minus the minus would be plus square root 7 i over 2. And so this one's just not pretty. This one not pretty. Um, how do you know you have to factor it twice like in B? Oh, because I give it to you twice. So if I list the same, what, what I'm doing here is I'm cheating you a little bit. I'm like, well, find all the zeros. Here's two of them, right? And I give it to you twice. That means go ahead and do that twice. Here, I only give them to you once. That means only try them once, right? Um, so once you get all this out, you get your zeros. So the zeros here are two, a, a minus a third, and then negative one half plus or minus the square root of seven over two i. And so those are all your zeros. The multiplicity of all these is one, 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 and one. Okay. So that's that's all of this.